Mm-hmm. So first question, did you anticipate the show becoming the phenomenon it has? No, I do remember reading the script for the first time. I remember the script coming through from my agent and it came with a note from my agent saying, read this, it's awesome. It's like nothing we've ever read. And and when I did read it, I was completely agreed with them. It was um, wild and anarchic and mad, but also like deep and profound and poetic at times. And uh, yeah, I, I loved it. I couldn't quite pinpoint why I loved it. And because it, it's quite... It, it was not, it doesn't have the same kind of um, structure as most things, I suppose. So it did, I couldn't cling on to a structure that I recognised, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And uh, it's continued to just uh, engage me and all of us in that way. And um, I think it's got better and better uh, because we've all grown in confidence, I suppose. Um, Tony included in his writing and knowing what this world is and you know, the first season is about setting up the world and the characters. And then once that's established, you can really dive deep into the possibilities of these of this world and characters and the way they interact with each other. Um, but also, you know, we've become more confident in working with the material and in working with each other. Like, um, you know, we've, we've become really close friends over three years and uh, we have like a great chemistry, I think, that, um, that uh, it comes out to play. So, um, yeah. Yeah, completely agree. I love it. I think it's brilliant. It has me in stitches every time I watch it. Um, so I guess the next question you maybe answered a little bit, but what, let's ask anyway. What do you think is the secret to the show's success? There's something in its irreverence. It's kind of joyful in its um, not giving a shit in a way. In, excuse my language, but I just think it is just um, it, it, like... Uh, the fact that what's what's the little um, script that comes up at the at the beginning is uh, occasional truths or something like that. You know, it kind of they they make an allusion to the fact that there's the only a certain amount of historical accuracy in in the piece. And so I think that when you give yourself that freedom, it you can kind of do anything you want and you can go anywhere you want. And um, there's something that's quite kind of joyful about that. Um, but also, you know, I think in you can explore some pretty um, kind of profound and beautiful uh, concepts in in setting it in the history. You know, there are some really deep conversations about faith and about love and marriage and parenthood and uh, legacy and religion. Um, and I think because it's done through this kind of slightly anarchic irreverent way with these wild characters where they express themselves in such kind of uh, outrageous and base terms sometimes it doesn't come across as didactic in any way shape or form it's like it's it engages in a way that uh, a more traditional historical drama I think would you wouldn't kind of engage with in that way you know yeah no it's definitely more accessible in a lot of ways which is Mm. a lot more fun how satisfying has it been to spend more time with your character than maybe you would have done on a film? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the joys of working on TV is that you kind of get to explore a character over a long period of time. And, uh, you know, the other thing is that you don't necessarily, we, we never know when we come to start a season where our character is going to go. We kind of sit down with Tony in a in a in his office and he'll kind of have the whiteboard in the background with a few post-it notes on it and be like, yeah, kind of, thinking that uh, maybe Grigor has a relationship with Mariel in this one. He said that at the beginning of season two. And to that point, me and Mariel had never had a scene together. I think we may have like walked past each other in the corridor once. He's like, yeah, I think you're, I think you're going to have an affair and going to have a relationship. We're like, okay, cool. So it's just, you know, like I say, this is, it's a world in which anything can happen. So it's fun to just uh, be surprised in that way. You know, when you have a film, you have the script, you have it in its entirety and you're going to tell this contained, beautiful story. And that has that's brilliant in itself. But it's quite fun just not knowing where we're going, because that's probably a bit more akin to life in general, isn't it? I mean, you know, as actors, we want to plot out the whole arc and kind of think about where I'm heading towards and all this kind of stuff. But we don't know where we're heading towards, you know, as, as human beings, we kind of have a hope and an idea where we might head towards, but we don't really know. And uh, that's the case, you know, in life, but it's definitely the case in this kind of mad court of Catherine and Peter, because 
life is lived by the minute because it's a you know kind of wild and dangerous place to be so every it, it kind of forces you to just be in the present which is quite exciting yeah very much so um how have you enjoyed the arc of your character and their evolution from series one through to season three yeah i've loved i've loved it i i have a soft spot in my heart for Grigor because uh yeah he uh he's been through the mill i think he's <laughs> he's kind of um there are characters in the piece that uh uh are more uh, they're players they're schemers and and uh, machiavellians i suppose you'd probably think about um archie and and elizabeth to a degree and certainly georgina and i think uh you know Grigor's tried his hand at that but um what I like is that he's come to a peace with himself that it's not, I don't think that world's for him. Um, you know, he's a, I think he's quite a sensitive man. Certainly by the end of season three, he's kind of become a man who's quite happy to just uh, live a simple life, I think. Um, so I've, I've loved him discovering that about himself and, and coming to peace with it to a degree. Um, and, you know, if we carry on and do more, it'd be very, it'd be interesting to see where he goes with that because, you know, he's, he, having said that, he's still bound and married to Georgina, who certainly isn't uh, content with a simple life. She seems to want power and influence. So um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. And what's been your favourite on set moment thus far? Oh, there's so many. Um, <laughs> So man, it's so hard to kind of tie it down. Um, I really love, uh, I love the, I love the group scenes. I love the big kind of banquets that we have because um, it's an opportunity for us all to come together and uh, they fun days and you kind of hang out in between scenes and mess about and have fun and uh, catch up with each other and and all that kind of stuff. But then the one on ones, I, I'm so lucky to to have a lot of my one on one scenes with. Well, with Charity, predominantly in Phoebe and Nick, um, I would say those who I have most of my scenes with. And they are, first of all, awesome actors that bring out the best in you. And they're fun to play with. Um, uh, but they're, they're just lovely people. And just, you know, we've all become so close over the years. It's, um, yeah, it's a really joyful job. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 basically, that's a long-winded way of saying I love all of it. <laughs> Can handle long-winded. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. Ellen and Nicholas feel born to play their roles. Why do you think audiences have taken to their characters so warmly? They have the most amazing chemistry. They're just so kind of um, at ease with each other uh, to the extent where they kind of don't, they don't care about taking risks and they really do take risks. And I think that's got even more and more that's even more and more the case throughout the seasons that they just push each other and they feel safe with each other from a working point of view, from an acting point of view, to the extent where they can just kind of try out things. And so there's a freedom to their performances. Um, it's uh, when you see someone that can kind of fly and do anything and go anywhere they want within their character, it's like, it's so exciting to watch. And um yeah, it's been really thrilling to watch that evolve over three seasons and to, and to kind of interact with it. Um, and I think audiences do respond to that. But, you know, it's also <laughs> their kind of the chemistry between the characters as well, what they're going through, how they're learning to live with each other, how they're learning to love each other. You know, just seeing a couple that is that dysfunctional um, mm -hmm. to the extent, you know, season three begins with uh, Catherine, uh, sorry, Peter Fine watching Catherine try to murder him in the shape of his, uh, you know, do doppelganger. That's quite a hard thing to come back from as a couple. Um, so I think yeah, we all relate to the madness of their love and their kind of chemistry. If it's one way to put it, it's quite a hard thing to come back from when you try to kill your other half. Um, what, what do you think the future holds for the show? I think we'd all love to do more. I mean, we love it. We love the show so much and, and each other. We've all become so close. And uh, it's a really, it's a gift of a job. And uh, and it's loved by many. It seems to be a popular show, which is brilliant. And uh, for those reasons, I think we'd love to do more. I think also just in terms of the story, um, I think it was always Tony and Elle's intention to kind of, um, you know, this is just the beginning of Catherine's reign in reality. She reigned for 
30 odd years in, in Russia and kind of brought Russia into the modern era. So this is the first chapter of many, many, many. And I don't think there's ever an intention to kind of go deep into her reign and tell stories for season after season after season. But there was certainly a hope and an intention to um, see Catherine uh, kind of begin her journey of that long reign and see her unburdened by by Peter and and everything that he kind of stood for and uh, and the, and the dynasty that kind of preceded him, I suppose. So um, yeah, it'd be fascinating to see life without Peter and and Catherine kind of unbridled, being able to explore her reign and her power. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you go!